last kingdom of living organisms, and that's kingdom animalia. Now, animals, remember, are living organisms, but the focus here is they are multicellular, so they have many cells. They are eukaryotic, so they have membrane-bound organelles. They have a nucleus, and they are heterotrophs, so they eat other things. They cannot make their own food using sunlight, using a chloroplast. Animals do not have a chloroplast, so they must eat other things. But primarily here, you do need to be aware of some specialized sensor organs that animals have. Uh, they have a nervous system like a brain and spinal cord, but some of the basic animals will have more of a nerve net like a jellyfish. Or Now animals are going to be divided up into invertebrates and vertebrates. So we're going to have our first unit focusing on invertebrates, meaning that there is no backbone. They will still have a nerve cord, but there is no backbone protecting the nerve cord. So if there's a, so some of these animals will uh, be real squishy and soft, but there is some sort of pattern of nerves spread throughout, uh, like sponges and jellyfish, uh, squid, octopi. Uh, but then you have uh, some that actually have a, uh, a ventral nerve cord, a nerve cord going through the body, such as earthworms, uh, ventral meaning lower side, and we'll talk about that in a little bit. While other animals, other invertebrates, may have a protective covering, but it's not a backbone. They may have an exoskeleton. That would be your arthropods, your uh, crustaceans or insects. They will have an exoskeleton. But then you have vertebrates. Vertebrates have a backbone. That's going to be fish amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Now there are key words that you need to be aware of. We already talked about eukaryotic, multicellular, and heterotrophic. You need to know these terms. We've learned them multiple times in the past. Um, then when we go to specialized cells, the specialized cells, all that refers to are cells that have different jobs such as bone cells make bones, muscle cells make muscles, nerve cells make more nerve cells. They have a different function. Now, animals are primarily going to reproduce sexually. Some can reproduce asexually, and that will be uh, starfish, uh, sea stars, uh, sponges, and some nadirians, such as the hydra. They will all respond to some sort of stimuli or touch, and they are capable of locomotion or movement. Make sure you know locomotion means movement at some part of their life cycle. So sponges look like they're like plants. They look like they just sit there, but they actually have little flagella inside their body, and they will bring uh, a current of water, bring food into their body. But also when sponges are a larva, they will be free swimming, and then they plant themselves into the ground, and then they develop and grow from that. So at some part, point of their life, they are free swimming. Now jellyfish, when they're young, uh, they're actually kind of like a little plant structure forming. Uh, they can do asexual and sexual reproduction, but uh, when they reproduce, uh, they can actually uh, break off layers forming the larger jellyfish. Now, there are three animal body plans. There's asymmetrical, radial, and bilateral. Now, asymmetrical means that there's no symmetry. Now, symmetry refers to a similar pattern around an axis, a similar part. So most sponges are just, just have random growth areas. There's no symmetry. There's no pattern, no left and right side anything like that. There's no central axis to find a similarity. Now some sponges do have radial symmetry, but primarily sponges are going to focus on asymmetrical. So we can put sponges in asymmetrical and radial, mainly asymmetrical. The second one, which is radial, refers to the symmetry around a center axis. This is kind of like a center point, like the center of a bicycle wheel. You have the center and then you have the spokes of the bicycle wheel that's showing that a section of the bicycle wheel is similar to others. Uh, think of a pizza pie. 
Okay, you have a pizza. You cut the pizza down. Each slice is very similar to the other slices. Now, something could be tall, but also if it has a round top, you're going to be not looking at it from the side, but you're going to be looking at it from the round top. Think of a candle. A candle can be somewhat tall, and you're not going to say, oh, there's a left and right side, because no, you can keep turning that circular cylinder shaped candle and you can never have a distinct left and right side. So with the candle or maybe a lamp, okay, one of those round lamps, uh, you would look at the top portion and then you would find a center point and then if you would break it up into the pieces of a pie, that would be radial symmetry. Think about a jellyfish. Jellyfish long, well you're not looking at it from the side, you're going to look at it from the top and then you're going to break it apart from there. And the last one is bilateral. Bi meaning two and lateral meaning side. This is a distinct left and right side. Okay, it doesn't have to be perfect symmetry, but a human basically has okay, a left and right side. Two arms, a left and right arm, a, re left, and, a left and right leg, uh, two nostrils, left and right nostril, two corners of the mouth, two eyes, two ears. So this is going to be your bilateral symmetry. Here's a picture of the sponge. You can see uh, basically very random, growing from the sides, growing up, growing all over. There's no central axis. Here's radial symmetry. We're going to look at it not from the side view, but from the top. And you can see the C star. These slices, each leg is similar. Now, someone did ask me, well, why can't you just divide the C star down in half? And then you got a left and right side. Well, the key here is if I spin the C star around, you don't know which one is the left and right side. There's no distinct left and right. And here we have the jellyfish. We're looking at it from the top, and we have these slices. Now, bilateral symmetry, we can uh, have a mirror image, a left and right. We can see I can do that. Uh, if I'm looking at the lobster, if I'm looking at the top of the lobster or the front of the lobster, I can see uh, it has a left and right side. I can actually relate this to non-living objects. Uh, here we have the living object, which is the sea anemone, and I can relate this to a pot. I use the example of a candle or a lamp, more of a cylinder shape. And then you have bilateral symmetry, uh, the crayfish, you can relate that to a spoon, a shovel, a car. Now we're going to focus on anatomical terms that you need to know. I would encourage you to put these on index cards, maybe on Quizlet, but make sure you're actually not just memorizing these, but you know examples you can actually identify where they're located. And you're going to have to do this throughout the year. Now dorsal means top. That's going to be the top or the back of the dog. Uh, think about a shark when you're swimming, you'll see the dorsal fin. That's the top of the shark. Now, ventral means bottom, the belly area. That will be the belly or bottom of the dog, the belly, the bottom of uh, the crayfish or the turtle. Uh, if the turtle flips over, the belly would be up. It would be ventral side up, and that's not good for the turtle. Then we have anterior and posterior. A beginning of the alphabet. Anterior refers to the front, while posterior is the back. Think about post-World War I, post-war. That means after, behind. So that would be in the back. Now, if we're talking about humans, humans, this is key. Humans, it's going to be different from animals such as dogs and cats. Dogs and cats will have a dorsal, the top back, it will have a ventral, the belly, and then a dog, the front will be anterior where the head is, the face, and then the posterior will be where the butt or the tail is. But for humans, dorsal and posterior are going to be at the same area because humans don't walk on all fours. If humans did, then we'd have four separate locations. But for humans, we're actually going to have dorsal and posterior being the same area, which will be the back. 
ventral and anterior for humans will be the same area, the belly, the front. Okay, now we're going to focus on lateral, medial, or median. Lateral means side. So my arms are lateral to my belly button. Medial is midline, so going right between my eyes, through my nose, through my belly button. Lateral versus median. This is usually when you are looking straight at the person, okay, the front. And right here, we're going to take a look at our little raccoon. Here's the medial point right down the center. Okay, here's our little raccoon. We're going to go right down the center. This is the medial point. And here is our lateral. There's a little side of our raccoon. So lateral means side. The cow, we're going to take a look at some different parts here. Uh, posterior, okay, which means in the back. And anterior is the front. Dorsal is the top or the back, the literal back or backbone area. And then ventral meaning belly. Caudal meaning tail, that's also posterior. And cephalic meaning head region.